Hello there folks. This quick video today is going to show you how to make a pump jack animation. So if you want to simulate a pump jack going up and down when it's on and so forth. So what I got here is uh, I just got a picture of a pump jack on the screen. Uh, where I found this, this picture, uh, can be found in Symbol Factory over in the right side of Crimson. Go to Symbols. And then if you slide on down to uh, Pumps in here. Let's see, right here, Pumps. If I go to Pumps. And then when I go in here, there's a picture of a oil pump jack. I can click on that, and then there's all kinds of different versions of it, uh, any of those. And I just drag it out here as a picture. But this is just a picture, and it's not really an animation, if you will. So, and there's not a way here that I can figure out to create different frames for this of movement. So what I did uh, to make this happen is I went on the uh, web, and I got a bunch of pictures of a pump jack. And so here's what the pictures look like. So, oops, let me make that smaller. Ah, anyway, so that's the one picture I grabbed. And then I've got some other frames. So here's some other frames of it. And as I oscillate through the different pictures, you can see this is what I have. So let me show you how I'm going to use this. In Crimson, I'm going to go over to the right side and go into Primitives. I'm going to go into the category called Core Primitives on top. And I'm going to use the uh, primitive called the animated image in the upper right-hand corner, this IMG thing. And I'll drag this box out here on the screen like this, and uh, maybe I'll make it a little bigger. I want you to notice that if I click away with the white background, it's still there. It's just a blank box right now. So if I double-click on this thing, you bring up your uh, properties here of the images. And for this example, I'm going to choose to use three different images. And notice as I increment this box, you get other boxes and so forth. Also, I want you to notice that Crimson, when you did this, automatically kicked you back in the symbol factory because it says, well, maybe you, maybe you want to use one of these pictures. Well, you certainly could drag this picture over here and do something like this, which will give you different colored versions of it, but it doesn't, doesn't show motion. So instead, what I'm going to do, I'm going to use the Browse button right here. And I'm going to navigate to that directory where I saved those uh, pictures I found on the uh, interweb. So I'll pick uh, Pump Jack Green number one there. I'll hit Browse here. And I'll make this be Pump Jack number two. And I'll make this one be Browse Pump Jack number three. Number four is basically the same as number two. Uh, there's a slight difference. Yeah. So I'll do, I'll do that for number three. And then I will add one more. I'll go ahead and hit Browse here. And I'll make this be number four. Let's see here we got here. So you can see that the between that and that, the arm swings. So, okay, good. All right. So I got four images right there. And I need something that's going to oscillate between uh, all four of these. And the tool that I found that works great is over in the lower right-hand corner in System. Uh, let me collapse this so you can see where I'm at here. And in System here, if you expand the Functions tree... And then if you go down to the tag data, there's a function here called get up down data. This guy right here. I'm going to drag this function right here into this window. However, I need to put a few variables in here. So I'm going to hit the edit button right here. And this variable right here, this zero, I'm going to use the function called disp count. So watch what I do here. I'm going to click in here. I'm going to delete that zero, which leaves my cursor right there where the comma is. And then I'm going to go over to the right side here, and still in the system, I'm going to collapse the functions tree, and then I'll expand the variables tree. And there's a function here called disp count. All that does is updates, uh, counts uh, basically by 10 every second. So I'm going to use this. Now watch this trick. I'm going to drag this out here, and look, see the black line? I want to drop this right before the cursor. So as I move it, all right, before the comma, right there, boom, okay. And I'm going to make this thing count up to, I'm going to do three here for my images. And so it should go zero, one, two, three. Let's see if that works. I'll hit enter. Okay, that took it. And then if I click okay, there it is on the screen right there. And before I download, I'll show you the web page. Uh, well, the web page is already around it. So let me go ahead and download this to the page. And let's see here when it comes up. So there you have it running. Uh, you can see that it sticks a little bit here in the web server. 
Uh, the real screen's not doing that. And I found, if I go back into here, and if I change this count here, uh, actually, if I change this to three images, let's see if this clears up. I can tell you the screen looks great, but the web server, I got so much traffic going on here at my office that my web page may not be updating as fast as, but that looks pretty good right there. So if I leave it like that, that looks pretty good, I think, anyway. Now, what if I wanted to have, uh, I wanted to say, you know what? I want this picture to be only up when the pump jack's running. So right here, show item, I can create a tag here. Um, let's call this one pump, uh, pump jack status, for instance. Status. And I'm going to make, I'm going to do two equal signs, or two a space, two equal signs, and number one, I'm going to ask, hey, if the pump jack status tag is one, then I want this to show up. If it doesn't, then it won't show up. So watch what happens. I'm going to hit enter. One, two, three. Boom. It's going to ask me to declare that tag because right now I do not have a tag in this program called pump jack. I want this tag to be an on-off thing. So instead of it being an integer, I'm going to allocate it as a flag tag. That is, in this software, the Boolean type on-off or zero, one. So I'll click the OK button. Now I have that. I'll click OK. And if I go over here to the right side, and I'll grab this guy out here like this just so we can see it. And you can make this data entry by using this, or I'm going to use actually a button. So if I go over here, go to my home directory, my symbols, go down here to my two-state toggles, and I'm going to use this standard simple toggle button here to turn it on and off. We'll make this a little bigger like this. I'll put it right here. I'll double-click on this guy. And I want to use that pump jack status tag here for the control. By the way, this little unused area right here, if I change the aspect ratio to no, it'll fill in correctly. And if I go over here to data tags, I'll take this guy and I'll drag it right here. Boom. Right there. Now, according to that, it's only going to show up when this is on. So let's try it out. So if you look, you don't see the pump jack. If I turn it on, there it is. It's working away. If I turn it off, it stops. Turn it on, shows up, turn it off. So, okay, that works great. But then I'm thinking, wait a minute. What if I wanted to have that picture uh, be gray when it's uh, uh, in the off state, for instance, or black, the black version of it that I have? Well, I'm going to go over here to Symbol Factory, for instance. That's going to sound really weird, but... I'm going to use any of these. It doesn't matter which one because I'm going to change it. So I'm going to drag this guy out here like this. doesn't matter which one because watch what I do. I'm going to double click on this guy and I'm going to say, you know, instead of using this image, hit the browse button. It takes me right back to the directory where it was and I'll choose the red one here. Click that. That's the image and the only time I want this to show up is when that tag equals zero. So I'm going to click this edit button right here which brings up this expression thing. And this allows me to go to the right side and go to data tags, drag that pump jack status out here. You can certainly type it as well. But, and then I only want this to show up when it's off, so I'm going to put a space, two equal signs, two equal signs, ask the question, a zero, and then I'll hit enter. So anytime the pump jack is off, this should show up. Anytime it's on, this will not show up, and the other one will. So I'll put that. Now I want to make this guy the same size as this one, so I'll right click on this one. Same size as this guy. There we go. And then I'm going to right click and I'm going to take this one and I'm going to align it centered on this guy. Boom, just like that. All right, let's see what happens here. Okay, I should be updating here. There we go. All right, so as you can see, it's in off position. If I turn it on, there it is running. If I turn it off, there it is. See that? Perfect. Anyway, that's a quick, easy way that you can use the get up down counter or get up down data function to create a thing that will oscillate between images to give you some visualization for a pump jack. Uh, I guess I could go one step further. Let me go back to Crimson. Let me think about this. Um, I wonder if I could make this a reusable widget. I wonder. Let's try this. So if I take my mouse and I lasso. Notice I lasso the item. This is much like the AC blower I do in my class. I'm going to right-click on this guy and go to Widgetize. Everything in here is basically controlled by the pump jack status guy, I think. 
So I'm going to hit edit. Make this be one here. Okay. And I'm going to type the same name of the tag over here. So I'm type pump jack underscore status. Oops, status US. And I'll delete this for now. Uh, it's going to be an integer tag. It's part of the boolean or the uh, flag tag is part of the integer category. So I'll do that. I'll hit this. Here's going to be a tag. And that'll do it. Um, I'm going to use the folder binding, which will help this tag, this widget tag, get connected to the real ones, even though this isn't a folder, but I'll show you here. I'm going to click OK. There it is. Now notice it's not connected here. I just want to prove this case. I'll click OK. Now I got in this raw state here. I'm going to go to the organized pull down. I'm going to save the widget. In case somebody wants this, I can email them the widget and they can just put this in their thing. I'll just call it pump jack. Boom. Now that I've saved it, if I go over to the right side and go to the home directory, actually go to primitives, go to the home directory of primitives, if I come down to widgets, there it is. Theory is I should be able to drag it out here like this. This is the one we widgetized. This is the one I just used as a widget. And I'm going to right click on this one and go to properties. And I'm going to drag this tag here, which in my theory should connect it to the black off state and should connect to the green one behind the scenes. I'm not for sure, but we're going to try it. I think it will, but I'll see. We'll click OK. So my theory is this one will not work. This one will. Let's see. Because this one, look, is not connected. See, it's not connected. Let's see what happens. All right, let me download to the screen. Here we go. Let's see what happens on our screen. All right, we're running. Look, they're both up in view. That's interesting. Aha, perfect. This one shows up correctly. This one shows up by default because there's nothing there, so the tag is theoretically in zero state, I guess. So, But this one, if I turn it on, works perfectly well. And, of course, if I turn it off, it shows up. So that's just an easy way, team, that you can use uh, the animated image uh, to create a pump jack uh, movement. Uh, anyway. Thanks a lot. Have a great day. This is for my buddy uh, Robert called earlier today for this example, so I'd like to thank him, and uh, that's what it's for. Hope it works for you, Robert. Say, buddy.